Hello there, my name is Florian. Welcome to this first video about Fontolis. In this video series, I would like to go over the internals of Fontolis, explain one concept of how it actually works in each video, and illustrate that there's a method of madness when it comes to solving bugs in Fontolis. There's a certain uh, set of steps I always follow to detect what is going wrong and how can I fix it. And I would like to share this with you. This video series is part of something I call the road to adoption. In 2020, I would like to have more people using Phantomus in their code base. And I would also like to have more people contributing to the project. For today, we're going to talk about the most important concept of Phantomus. We're not going to cover everything, but to start with, how does Phantomus work? It uses the f -sharp compiler service. This is a package you can find on NuGet. It's basically a library that uh, offers um, parts of the compiler, of the f -sharp compiler, uh, exposes it as an API. And you can execute different phases of the compiler. And one of those is parse source code to a untyped abstract syntax tree. This is a representation of your source code in a tree-shaped uh, format where we can use that tree and then print out whatever we find in the tree back to source code in a um, formatted way. So for today, i will like to uh, look at an issue I found here on GitHub where a pipe is removed in discriminative union. If we go to the issue itself, we can see that it was created with Fantomas UI. And it says that um, a discriminated union loses the pipe when, but when it only has one record, this becomes a type alias. So it does different things. And the code might not compile anymore. It was created with Fantomas UI. This is our uh, online tool we use to uh, detect bugs. Basically, um, you can configure all the settings you have and you can click the link here, create issue to um, create a new issue when you want to report a bug. The great thing about this is that it will create a nice little report. What's the before, what's the after, and what are all the options? So this is really helpful when you um, find a bug to give us all the information. Maybe lastly, um, when you see that there's a drop down here, you can check which version of Phantomus are you using. The current is the latest one you can find on, uh, MP on NuGet. The preview is the one that is uh, linked to the latest master. And then there's an older version uh, we use to see if there are any regressions coming from the previous ma major version. OK, so if we go to the preview, which has the latest code on master, we'll see that the bug unfortunately it still exists. The pipe is still gone and it leads to a um, it leads to a different uh, set of code. So we can take this code and let's go over to the project. I've downloaded I've cloned from Thomas and if I open the solution I see that we have three projects here. We have the main project where the magic happens. Then we have the command line clients and there's a unit test projects. Maybe the best thing we can do here, uh, we can start and create the unit tests. Since we're talking about discriminated unions, I think the file union test will be the best place uh, suitable for this. I am going to create a new test, the little snippet I have. Um, in this case, a single case discriminated union should keep pipe after formatting. And I'll put in the uh, GitHub issue name. Basically, this is what we had before. And we're using the default configuration. Format source string is a helper method. And then we can, uh, the should equal part is actually the assert here. So if we go back to Phantoms Online, we can actually copy what we expect that the outcome is. The only thing that we're actually expecting is that there's still a pipe there, because otherwise it's a type, a, type alias. If I now run that unit test, 
we can see that indeed we're not having the pipe, which uh, we saw in the online tool, but we're actually expecting it. So this is our starting point. Now the first thing I always do is I copy the source code, the original part, and I go to a tool called the AST Viewer to see what kind of a tree comes out of there. If I um, paste it in here, show the untyped AST, we get something like this, which uh, starts with an implementation file and then it goes to an anonymous module, etc., etc. So this is actually the representation I talked about. This is the untyped tree. Um, and well, some things will, will look familiar. Uh, we have two types here, which, which matches our two types over there. We have a component info record, which has a field called name, which is what we find over here. And this is the information we use to print out the source code again. Now, we're interested in the second type, because if we have a union over here, it has a union case record with no fields. That's it. If we remove the pipe, then we can see the union disappears and it becomes a simple type abbreviation, which is uh, semantically not the same and it could lead to compiler errors. So basically after formatting, we shouldn't be uh, changing the outcome of the AST tree. Now, I seem to need this pipe, in this case, to have the union, but I noticed from previous issues that if I have a member, a union case field to my member, then I don't need the pipe. So that's why the incentive comes to skip the pipe um, and try and write this uh, as short as possible. So. In this case, if there is a union case field, which is my string over here, then it doesn't go to a type alias. So that might be an interesting thing to check in our uh, code space. Why is um, the union case formatted without a pipe when it has no union case fields? So maybe that uh, will provide us a clue on how can we solve this. So this is again the type abbreviation and we are looking for the union and the union has a union case. So somewhere in the code, I should be able to find union case. Let's just um, find everything. And we see the first thing here, we have a sin union case union case. This is an active pattern. Um, based on the source parser file. So if we look in the project here, we are going to talk about two um, parts today, which is the source um, parser and which is the code printer. The code printer actually takes the tree and prints it out again to the um, text. And the source parser is something that uh, is being used to um, get information out of the AST tree, do small transformations, uh, just to make it easier in the code printer. So if we look into the documentation of SIN union case, we can actually um, see all the documentation of the AST that we're using uh, on GitHub. A SIN union case has a single union case member over here. And I can see that the sin union case type is the thing that um, says whether there are members or not. So union case fields uh, will probably be of that type. And we have two union cases there, which is one that's only being used in F sharp core. So we we'll don't have to bother with that. And there's union case fields, which has cases, and that's that list that we saw. So gut feeling, if that list is empty, then we should be able to um, set the pipe anyway, because otherwise it would be a type alias. Okay, um, so we can go back and see where is this union case being used. And it's used in gen type definition. So maybe let's start at the bottom, gen type definition 
takes a sin type definition. Sin type definition is uh, something we found in our AST tree. So that will be that type definition. And in case it is a uh, union case, it will match into this. Now we can see we have union cases here. Um, this might be a good one to set a breakpoint to see what that is. I'm expecting that's going to be our discriminated union here. So if I were to debug our failing unit test, I'm expecting to hit the breakpoint here. And I'm actually also expecting to get into this case because we only had one member of our discriminated union. So let's see what happens. OK. Um, the first breakpoint we're hitting here is when uh, the things are being set up. So we can see that we have something called maybe AST, which is the thing that we saw in the tool. So that's the abstract syntax tree. Then we have some configurations, whether they're defines or not, uh, what the content was. And um, we'll get back to that in other videos. We can see that there seems to be already a check whether it has a vertical bar. And it's dependent on two things, whether there are attributes, which in this case uh, we didn't have attributes, or whether it has a access modifier. So maybe let's go back to the AST viewer. If we were to have an, an attribute here, this won't compile. Because if you have an attribute, it needs a type before it, like this. OK. And if you were to have a access modifier, um, I think like this. This doesn't compile as well, because we would need to pipe here to get to the AST. So those are two checks that are in place if we're talking about one member in the discriminated union. Um, these are, are things we already identified that we definitely need a pipe over here. Now, I think we can just simply uh, stop the debugging for a while. And we can just extend that logic of does it need a vertical bar with, um, let's call it, uh, has no uh, fields or has no union fields. And I should be able to retrieve that information from my union case. So if I just go back to that active pattern, uh, sin union case, I can see that it has that union case type. So the last uh, argument of my um, union case over here is going to contain the information I need. So if I'm going to pattern match that, And we looked in the documentation and we saw that the union type uh, fields had like two uh, options, the fields themselves or uh, union case full type, but that was only used in F-sharp core. So we can use this active pattern to get to uh, the list. If we match it with uh, fields, and we say list is uh, empty. Then it should also set the, the bar. All right. Let's just run our unit test again to see if all those assumptions are correct. And great, that unit test passes. Um, so, yeah, that, uh, that's great. Um, maybe just for the record, let's copy this unit test and create another one. Let's say single case discriminated union uh, which fields should not have a pipe. Just 
to prove that we tackled the other case as well. So if we were to have record string, this should also still work. All right, great. And that uh, proves what we expected. So cool. So I'm about to wrap up this video. This was a very lightweight introduction. Uh, not all concepts of Phantomas were, were seen here, but this is like really the main gist. You get the AST tree and you try to print it out again with the file and with the things being done in code printer. Uh, we'll get to that, how exactly is the text coming out of it, uh, part of it in, in later CF, later videos. Um, but yeah, step number one is always to check how does the AST look like. Many thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you want to see other things and um, keep on formatting. Take care.